that Honda created a motorcycle with technology so advanced it seemed straight out of a science fiction movie? The Honda NR750, with its four-cylinder engine and eight valves per cylinder, wasn't just a speed machine. It was a masterpiece of engineering. But why were so few people able to own one? Today, I'm going to tell you the story of the motorcycle that broke all the rules and left its mark on the history of motorcycling. In the 1970s, Honda had already established itself as a giant in the motorcycle industry. The CB750, launched in 1969, not only became the first mass-produced motorcycle with an inline four-cylinder engine, but also set a new standard for quality, reliability, and performance. The motorcycle was a milestone, marking the beginning of a new era in the industry, where Honda stood out for its focus on precision engineering and its ability to make motorcycles accessible to the general public. However, in motorcycle racing, especially in the World Motorcycle Championship, Honda faced a challenge that put its dominance in manufacturing bikes for the general market to the test. Two-stroke engines were dominating the competitions. Brands like Yamaha and Suzuki had perfected these smaller, lighter, and more powerful engines, capable of delivering more power per liter of displacement, which gave them an advantage in terms of speed and agility. Two-stroke engines were easier to manufacture, lighter, and in many cases, more cost-effective, making them an ideal choice for high-level competition. Honda, for its part, stood firm in its belief that four-stroke engines, although more complex and heavier, offered long-term benefits such as greater durability, efficiency, and a more refined performance. Honda's engineers, aware that they couldn't compete directly in the realm of two-stroke engines, committed themselves to pushing four-stroke technology to its limits. This gave rise to the need to reinvent the four-stroke engine and to start thinking about a motorcycle that could go head-to-head -head with the beastly two-stroke engines in motorcycle racing. It was a huge challenge, but Honda, true to its philosophy of constant innovation, saw competition not as a threat, but as an opportunity to prove its ability to revolutionize the motorcycle industry once again. And it was in this context that the idea was born to develop a motorcycle that could seriously take on the two-stroke bikes from Suzuki, Yamaha, and other brands. In 1979, Honda introduced the NR500, a model that would change the history of racing motorcycles, although not in the way people expected. At that time, the World Motorcycle Championship was still dominated by two-stroke engine bikes, and Honda decided not to follow the trend. Instead of adapting their approach to the simpler and more effective technologies of their competitors, the Japanese brand went all in on a completely bold and experimental concept, the oval piston engine. The idea behind this engine was complex and unique. Instead of traditional round pistons, Honda's engineers created an oval-shaped piston. Why? So it could operate with more valves and, in theory, generate more power. Honda's strategy was to transform its V4 engine into something much more like a V8, but in a much more compact and lightweight format, and with the added advantage of having four-stroke engine technology, which was much more durable and advanced than the two-stroke engines of its rivals. However, expectations and reality turned out to be very different. Even though the concept was innovative, the NR500 was not ready for the track. The problem started right away. The engine did not meet performance expectations and turned out to be more difficult to handle than anticipated. The NR500, despite being a masterpiece of engineering in terms of design and technology, was notoriously heavier than its rival bikes, which made it harder to control on the demanding curves of the racetracks. Additionally, the oval piston system turned out to be less efficient than expected, with constant reliability and durability issues. The bike suffered repeated mechanical failures, and its overall performance did not meet the team's expectations. 
By the late 1980s, Honda found itself at a crossroads. After the failures of the NR500 in competitions, the brand decided to rethink its strategy. They had invested years of development, resources, and effort into an innovative technology, but the results on the track were not what they had hoped for. However, instead of giving up, Honda decided to turn the situation around. If they couldn't win with the technology on the racetrack, they would use it to do something completely different, create the most exclusive and advanced motorcycle in the world. That's how the NR750 was born, a motorcycle designed not to compete, but to inspire. The concept behind the NR750 wasn't about building a bike to take on its rivals on the track. Its purpose was to show the world what Honda could achieve when it didn't have to worry about production costs or commercial limitations. Honda wanted to prove its ability to create a machine of unrestricted engineering, a motorcycle that would be a masterpiece of technology and design. The NR750 became a testament to Honda's commitment to innovation. The NR750 was not an easy motorcycle to manufacture. In fact, its production was extremely limited, which gave it an aura of exclusivity. Each of these motorcycles was built with surgical precision, using high-end materials like aluminum and carbon fiber. And it's the four-engine with oval pistons showcased Honda's ability to innovate even when other competitors were falling behind. The NR750 was more than just a motorcycle. It was a statement of intent, a way for Honda to tell the world that they weren't afraid to experiment and push the boundaries of engineering. When the Honda NR750 finally hit the market in 1992, it was a major event. It wasn't just a motorcycle. It was a true masterpiece of engineering and design. From the moment it was unveiled, all eyes were on it. Honda spared no effort in creating a motorcycle that not only delivered impressive performance, but also stood out for its innovation. Every detail, from the aesthetics to the functionality, was carefully designed to offer a unique experience for both riders and fans of design and technology. This bike was equipped with a 750 cubic centimeters V4 engine that produced an astonishing 125 horsepower. What really made it stand out, besides its incredible power, was the oval piston system. This configuration, which Honda had used in the NR500 and perfected for the NR750, gave the bike a unique character. The sound produced by the engine was unmistakable, and its performance, especially at high res, far exceeded what was expected from a bike in its class. Honda had achieved the unthinkable, a V4 engine with oval pistons that not only produced more power, but did so in a more efficient and durable way compared to other conventional engines of the time. In addition to its engine, the bodywork of the NR750 was also at the cutting edge of technology. Honda used innovative materials like carbon fiber and special alloys to ensure that the bike was lightweight yet robust, capable of withstanding the extreme performance that its engine could deliver. This combination of materials not only improved performance, but also gave the bike a futuristic look, almost like something out of a science fiction movie. The NR750 wasn't just a fast bike, it was also packed with advanced technology. To begin with, it featured a digital dashboard instead of the traditional analog gauges. This not only gave it a modern and sleek touch, but also improved the accuracy and readability of the readings, allowing the rider to have complete control over the bike's performance. As for the brakes, Honda equipped the NR750 with four-piston brake calipers, which gave it braking performance superior to any other bike in its class at the time. This type of brake, much more powerful and efficient, ensured that the bike could stop quickly and safely even at high speeds. One of the most striking details 
was the undertail exhaust design, which at the time was something new. This design not only improved the bike's aerodynamics, but also created a unique sound when the engine roared at full power. This undertail exhaust was not only a distinctive feature of the NR750, but later became a trend adopted by many sport bike manufacturers. And now, with all these revolutionary features, it's no surprise that the price of the NR750 was high. With a price tag of $50,000, this bike was practically an exclusive luxury for the most passionate enthusiasts and collectors. At a time when high-end sport bikes cost just a fraction of this price, the NR750 positioned itself as an elite motorcycle, accessible only to a small group of people willing to pay for exclusivity. What truly made this price justifiable was the technology and innovation that Honda had built into the NR750. It wasn't just a motorcycle, it was an example of what was possible when the boundaries of engineering and design were pushed. Honda wasn't interested in producing a bike for the masses. They wanted to create something unique, something that represented the pinnacle of sport bike technology and design. And for those who could afford it, the NR750 represented more than just a machine. It was a piece of art, a symbol of Honda's ability to overcome any technical obstacle and build a motorcycle that could have been seen as something straight out of a distant future. The high price was also justified by its limited production. In fact, only 300 units were made, making it an extremely rare and valuable motorcycle. For those who managed to acquire one, owning an NR750 meant not only having a high-performance motorcycle, but also an exclusive piece of motorcycle history. This exclusivity, along with its technological innovation, turned the NR750 into a symbol of luxury and advanced technology. A motorcycle that was not only designed to be ridden, but also to be admired as a work of advanced engineering.